What's up you guys? Welcome back to yet again another week of workouts video. We're all just gonna pretend like I'm not currently in Costa Rica right now because I really wanted to get up this video before we dove into all the Costa Rica content for the next five weeks. So this week of workouts was filmed during my last full week that I had here in Utah. So for someone who's looking to get healthy and strong and athletic and build like that fit hourglass physique, this workout split is definitely for you because we're hitting upper body, lower body, and we're incorporating more like functional based hip movements and also some steady state cardio. So as we get into the video, I'm obviously gonna walk you through every single one of my workouts for the week, share with you guys my workout split that I've been doing for months now. I've been loving it so much. I feel like this is the best I've ever felt in my fitness journey and the most overall well-rounded and balanced athlete I've ever felt. All of the workouts will be written out in the description box as well as the timestamps and everything that I'm wearing, including actually right now, is from Alphalee because I always get questions on my fits. And before I shut up and let you guys go watch the video, I do want to announce that my Utah retreat tickets are officially freaking live. So my Utah retreat is happening this coming August. So only a few months away now at this point and it's August 10th to the 13th. It's three nights and four days. And my whole theme for this retreat in the name of this trip is called connect to you the lift it connect to you retreat and my main intention with creating this one was just to help you become more grounded and help to strengthen your sense of self and really explore and get to know who you are and just become more connected to who you are again because i feel like especially in our day and age today and all the distractions and social media and all this other stuff societal expectations so many of us feel disconnected from so much so my intention with this weekend retreat is just to help you guys become more connected to who you are and just connect to ourselves and reconnect to nature and all that good stuff. So basically we're going to be doing that by tapping into the three main pillars of health, which is mind, body, and soul. So we're going to be doing workouts together, some journaling sessions and meditation. So daily lift fit workshops. And then we also have some really fun activities planned, like going for a hike in the mountains and then a very like aesthetic, cutesy group nature picnic, which I'm a sucker for those. And then one day we're doing a day trip to Sundance, which is like one of my favorite areas in Utah I love it and there's an option for either doing a like trail horseback riding session where we're like going by um, a waterfall and like stopping to do yoga halfway through like sounds amazing or if that's not really your thing you don't really like horses there's also an option for an art class at the resort so there's tons to do it's gonna be a very restorative and transformative and rejuvenating trip I'm hoping so if you're interested there's still some spots available you can click the link down below in the description box to purchase your ticket all right guys enjoy this week of workouts Well, 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 welcome to workout number one of the week, folks. So I'm starting off with my good old dynamic stretch. Nothing has really changed. Always foam rolling, cracking the spine, helping with spinal mobility as well, just getting loose and getting some blood flow. So I like to do it on my back. And then I also like to flip over and really open up my shoulder joint and open up my chest. It feels phenomenal. Now I'm bringing you through some of my top mobility drills. These have helped so much with increasing my squat depth and just everything. And it in turn helps you just have a way better lifts. So this is the world's greatest stretch. You are essentially going to bring one leg up towards your hand once you're in a plank position. And then you want to drop that elbow down to the ground. I promise when you're really tight, you won't even be able to do that. So it's harder than you think. And then you're going to rotate up that's going to get a nice big rotation in your thoracic spine or your upper spine once you bring that hand up towards the sky and as you do that you also want to rotate onto that working legs outer heel and then you're going to lunge back straight in that working leg to get a hamstring stretch it's such a great full body mobility exercise i'm obsessed with it and then from there i did some deep frogger squats as always and then i moved up to grab my toes to hit the hamstrings this is great for your groin and your hips as well as your hamstrings the biggest thing here when i say dynamic warm-up dynamic stretches this means that you're moving to take your muscles through a stretch rather than like a static stretch where you're just sitting and touching your toes. This is the best way to get your muscles warmed up for actual movement. You wanna save that static stretching for the end. So then I did some low lateral lunges also to open up the, the groin. Those always feel so good. These are some 90-90 rotations as well to get the hips nice and warmed up. So you wanna try to keep your ankle kind of pivoting in semi-fixed position. Um, and then drop your knees on either side to really get that hip rotation in there. I also added an extension by coming up on my knee 
knees as well, just to kind of bring that stretch to the next level. Then throw back to my forever glute activation days. I've kind of been dabbling in this again. I feel like I haven't done it in a while, but I really liked it. And I just kind of like going back to focusing on how I always used to train and what works for me. So I really like this just to kind of increase that mind to muscle connection with my glutes and just get things warmed up, get the juices flowing and get the blood flow there. So I just grabbed a little mini band. These are from Hope Fitness Gear. I can have them linked down below as well if you guys are interested, but I'm essentially just kicking my feet back and really focusing on squeezing those glutes to kick my heel up towards the sky. And this really does wonders for just getting the glutes warmed up and really waking up that mind to muscle connection with the glutes and recruiting them. For our first exercise, we moved into none other than hip thrust, but not just your generic hip thrust, we're adding a hold, so stay tuned. So I did some warm up sets, of course. Um, I started off with the plate and then chucked on my second plate and I'm only doing around like six to eight reps per warm up set and then I'm moving into my working set. We're not trying to like burn out the glutes. We're just trying to get some blood flow. So in terms of foot placement, you wanna bring your heel to where the crease of your knee would be if your feet were out straight. This is a great starting point that's gonna help have your heel be stacked underneath your knee when you were to lock out. So as you can see here, my shin is completely vertical. That's where you want your foot placement to be. My feet are about shoulder width apart. My toes are pointing straight forward. You can also tilt them, tilt them out 45 degrees if you would like. My chin is always tucked to my chest. I'm constantly looking forward. And I'm focusing on scooping up with my hips and driving through my heels so this is a big thing I don't want you guys thinking that you're leading and pushing your belly button up to your sky to the sky you honestly want to again suck your belly button to your spine and scoop up with your hips rather than leading with your belly button that's a really big cue for you guys so with that you want your chest remaining relatively vertical I say that just so you guys can really visualize that the movement here is coming from scooping your hips up with an like as an ice cream scooper if you will rather than just like driving up with your belly button and again we're constantly pushing up through those heels and squeezing your glutes. You really want to make sure that you're prioritizing the lockout at the top because that is the hardest portion of this movement. So no half reps, no three quarter reps. You're locking out till you cannot bring your hips up any higher to the sky. That is the full range of motion. You want to be reaching maximum hip extension in this movement. So you're doing four sets, 10 reps, and then on the 10th rep, you're holding it for 10 seconds. And dude, the pump, the burn, everything, we're just increasing that time under tension. It's superb. Then this is me just taking it all down because we all know this is the hottest pot. But, you know, you just got to do it. And then it gets better and easier and it's worth it for the booty gains. So then we moved into some RDL work, of course, Romanian deadlifts here. I'm using a barbell here and I'm also using wrist straps. I have mine linked down below on my Amazon storefront if you would like. These are a game changer, especially if you struggle with grip strength slash your legs are just getting pretty strong. These help everything make the world of a difference. So we're doing an RDL one and one half variation for three sets of six to eight. What does this mean? You're essentially going to do one rep. Well, I should say you're essentially going to do half a rep, come up to your knees, go back down and come all the way up. So we're doing one and one half reps. Both of those count as one rep. So the half a rep and the full rep is one and we're doing six to eight of those. So for RDL form, we're initiating the movement by pushing the hips backwards. You're not just bending over, you're pushing your hips back, which is inevitably causing your torso to fold over. Okay, huge cue there. I'm keeping a slight bend in my knee. If you want more glute focus, you can have a bigger glute, uh, excuse me, knee bend. If you want more of a hamstring, focus you should have less of a knee bend same thing when you're pushing those hips back that's going to inevitably push the weight onto your heels which is what we want and we want to be driving up through our heels to really recruit our hamstrings and our glutes pulling up through our hamstrings pulling up through our glutes by pushing the floor away with our heels to get up out of this movement my neck is in line with the, my spine and i'm keeping the barbell really really close to my shins and to my thighs it's grazing my legs the whole time that's really going to help to mitigate any lower back pain and you want to keep that core nice and tight this was me taking a breather at the end because these were brutal and everything felt so heavy this day. Clearly, I just chose my death this day because then we moved into Bulgarian split squats. Was this necessary? A little bit, honestly. So I did three sets of eight to 10. This is gonna have more of knee flexion involvement to hit more quad and glute, also glute medius and minimus for those stabilizers. This is just a great exercise, even though it kills. But if you wanna build a shelf and juicy legs, you guys gotta do this. So I like to start from the 
down position and then I am able to stand up from there and then I know how far away I am from the bench. It's a little a little life hack. So same thing when I said for the hip thrust, you want our knee to be stacked over our heel. So you really wanna kick your foot out farther, especially if your main focus is your glutes. So my shin is remaining vertical throughout the whole movement and that's kind of another good way to tell as well if your foot placement is correct because it's gonna help to increase that glute stretch. So as you can see, I'm sitting down here now. My foot's already on the bench so I know how far away I should be from the bench and my foot, my feet can already be in position. So another huge thing is this is not a vertical up and down range of motion, it's kind of diagonal. So I always say to sink back and down into any lunge and in this movement, a Bulgarian split squat. So you wanna be coming back and down rather than just straight up and down. And it's gonna help really increase that glute stretch on the way down. Another thing to help increase that is to have a slight forward torso lean. So if you look in the side of the mirror, my torso is kind of coming down towards my knee a little bit as I lower into the movement. It's gonna to help to increase the glute stretch. And what else am I gonna to say to finish this off? We wanna be driving up through that front leg. Say it with me, heel. That's what's really gonna have us recruit the glutes here and get those engaged. You should be feeling this, like I said, in your glutes, your quads, and then I promise you, especially if you're new, like your inner thighs are gonna feel very sore after this too. The hardest part is officially over. Now we're moving into some isolation work. So this is a glute med kickback. I'm doing this for three sets of 12. This is gonna hit a little bit more of the upper outer portion of our glute, as well as the main glute muscle, but this is gonna help just to give some more shape and roundness to the booty. So we're kicking out at about a 45 degree angle behind us rather than straight back. And my foot is also slightly pointed outward at a 45 degree angle. I have a slight bend in my leg to protect my knee and you basically want to pretend like you're trying to sweep with your leg and with your heel to kick a can across the floor and you want to focus on squeezing the upper outer portion of your glute so as you can see here i'm a little bit tilted as well at a 45 degree angle i personally like to be pretty bent over because i just feel like it helps to really release any tension on my low back and really focus simply on squeezing my glutes and kicking my foot back then to finish off we did some hammy curls I honestly love this machine. They're just, I've never been able to isolate each leg like this in this position and I love it. So it's like a single leg seated machine. I feel spoiled with the machines at my gym, I should just say. So I did this for three sets of like 10 to 12 on each leg. The biggest thing, I'm always like not the best at this, especially because I'm always tired at the end of my workouts when I'm doing these, but you want to really try not to basically be like arching your pelvis to bring the weight up, if you will. So I'm essentially trying to kick my bum with my heel, but you don't want to be like tilting your pelvis too far forward and like using momentum to kick up the weight. You want to try to keep your pelvis nice and neutral and a way to help you do that is to push your pelvis into the pad. I find that's what helps me do that the best way. So again, we're trying to kick our bum with our heel by squeezing our hammies. Happy Tuesday, you guys. Today we're hitting upper body. Y'all know the drill. And I'm wearing this electric sapphire blue set for the first time and I'm obsessed with it. Yesterday I just really did not feel like talking during my workout so I opted for no mic. But I'm feeling a little bit chattier today. Always starting off with foam rolling again. And I really try to have my spine like melt over the foam roller. For our first exercise, we're going to be doing a back movement, and this is kind of going to count more so as our vertical motion here. And this is a front pull down. If you have this machine, be thankful because it's freaking amazing. First thing, I'm just going to grab the handles and then make sure that this little like safety is above my thighs to keep me from basically lifting myself up off this little pad. I'm retracting my shoulder blades back and down to engage my lats because that's our main target here. So we're dropping those shoulders away from our ears, and it also helps prevent our traps from taking over the movement we don't want that because like I said our main target is our lats and then I'm essentially driving my elbows down towards the ground and I'm trying to keep my elbows in towards my side as well and I'm really focused on squeezing my lats to bring the weight down and we're going to stay here for four sets of 12. I don't know why this range of motion feels so good but you want to make sure that you're getting a nice big stretch up at the top we're hitting full range of motion and squeezing at the bottom so we're not going to do any half reps we're fully coming up at the top and coming all the way down to the bottom you want to also keep in mind that your hands are just hooks for the weight so you shouldn't totally be pulling with your biceps you want to be squeezing with your lats to get the weight down okay next we're moving into some more back and bicep work and we're gonna do, this is a lateral move, excuse me, horizontal movement now. So we're basically just gonna do a bent over like dumbbell 
row. So this exercise, I have my one knee up on the bench and my hand is supporting it. So my wrist is pretty much stacked underneath my shoulder here. And then I personally like to really kick this like stability leg out pretty wide because I like to kind of get wide and back to have a really nice stable base as opposed to sitting here trying to do it. So I, have, like, I like to keep my leg nice and wide and I like to kind of push my hips back and sit kind of on this heel. And then I'm gonna take this dumbbell and I'm essentially trying to keep, again, this is also targeting our lat and our mid back here. So I wanna keep my elbow nice and tight to my side so I'm not flailing out. And I wanna drive this dumbbell to, towards my hip. And I'm keeping my neck in line with my spine and I'm squeezing my lat as I'm bringing up the dumbbell. Keeping that core nice and tight. We, we don't wanna be twisting too much. We wanna keep our upper body nice and square to bring this dumbbell up. And then for the second exercise in the superset, we're going to be doing a bent over barbell rear delt row. So we're essentially trying to hit the back of our shoulders here. So contrary to exactly what I just told you guys, when you keep your elbows in, that's going to be hitting more like upper back, lat, mid back, all that sort of stuff. But for this exercise, since we're trying to hit our rear delts, we want to keep our elbows really nice and wide here. Now with that, I'm not necessarily bringing up the barbell to like a T and keeping my elbows at a completely 90 degree angle from my side. I'm kind of coming backwards a little bit and keeping my elbows tucked in just this pinch at like 45 degrees from my side. So there's a difference between here and here. So I have an overhand grip. I have the little preloaded barbell underneath my legs. I'm sitting at the very edge of the seat. I'm keeping my neck in line with my spine. I also like to really hold the very outer edges of the barbell. For some reason it helps me just like really think about my rear delts and pull from a very concentrated way. So again, we're not trying to pull with our biceps. We wanna focus on squeezing the back of our shoulders to bring this barbell up. Also dropping those shoulders away from our ears helps as well to make sure that we're pulling up with the proper muscles. We are moving right along into some, a cabled, uh, not cable, a chest fly, machine chest fly. So the first thing you wanna make sure that the seat is high enough so that you're having the right angle. You don't wanna be like down here doing this. You kinda of want it to be like this scooping motion, I guess, if you will. So I raise the seat up a little bit and you also don't wanna keep your arms pinned straight out. So I'm gonna keep a slight bend in my arm to protect my elbow, but it's not gonna be like super bent either. It's just kinda of gonna be a little bit of an angle in there. And we always wanna have this be the end of the movement to keep constant tension. And kind of back to what I said with that scooping cue, you wanna picture it like you're kind of trying to scoop up a bunch, like a load of laundry on your bed or like scooping a bowl of cookie dough by squeezing your chest. And this is also definitely gonna hit the front of your shoulders as well, but it's more of like a scooping motion is kind of how I picture it rather than just trying to push my palms together. And that's really gonna help you get more chest engagement. And this one is brutal for me. Keeping that core tight, dropping those shoulders away from our ears. We're doing three sets of 12. This is gonna make me so sore. Hold it. Now we're moving into another superset. So first exercise of this tricep is going to be a cable upright row, which is honestly my first time doing these. I love them. Usually I do them with the barbell. So it's the same form as with the barbell. We just have a little difference in resistance here because we have a cable. So dropping those shoulders away from our ears, retracting your shoulder blades back and down to de-engage our traps and actually be able to isolate our shoulders, which we're trying to target here. So rolling our shoulder blades back and down, my core is nice and tight, my chest is nice and open, and I'm essentially gonna graze the front of my body with this bar throughout the whole movement. And I'm going to be leading with my elbows up towards the sky, rather than kind of just lifting with their hands. You kind of want to drive your elbows up by contracting your shoulders to get the weight up. And you want to stop kind of about mid chest. There's no need to come up any higher than that because that's where that peak tension and contraction is. Second exercise in the superset is for the triceps. So this is a traditional tricep extension, but a little bit different. It's a, it's a suspended one. So we're not straight up and down. We're gonna have a little bit of a forward torso lean like this. I have a, some nice bend in my leg as well. Nice athletic stance. And then just like I always say, you wanna pretend like there's a rod running through your elbow. So we're not gonna be pulling this weight down and have our elbows be moving everywhere. The only target here is your triceps. So the only thing that are moving should 
should be your forearms at your elbow joint by contracting your tricep. So here, you wanna pretend like there's a rod running through your elbow. So they shouldn't be moving out or anywhere which way. They should be staying totally stationary. And you wanna just be driving the back of your palms towards the ground by contracting your triceps. So everything is very stable. My neck is in line with my spine. And I'm really focusing on just driving the back of my palms down and squeezing my triceps while doing so. So again, we're gonna do three sets, but a 15 here. Okay, we have Coach Ladehi. So this was his idea, so you can all thank your, bi well, owe your bicep death to him. But so essentially, we're gonna do three sets, but essentially all back to back. No, Anyways. Why? No, your body, why okay, 30 you, second rest. Why don't you do like a triple set? Because it's like a drop set but not a drop set because we're not dropping the weight. Okay, fine, so we're just gonna do three sets. And we're gonna start off with 12 reps on one side, then you're gonna hold the weight in the other hand while you're doing those 12 reps, and then switch and hold the weight while you're doing 12 reps on the other side. And then we're gonna go down to 10 and then finish with eight reps. And Lett is just gonna watch me disintegrate. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow any stuff for you. Oh, that really got my biceps. Wednesday is my steady state cardio day and I usually have been doing 12, 3, 30, but as of recently, I decided to switch it up for like another steady state cardio workout, treadmill workout, honestly inspired by Stefana Avara. And so I came up with this little complex that I love. It's five different intervals for two minutes a piece. So it's 10 minutes for each circuit and then we're gonna repeat it three times for a total of 30 minutes. So first I started off with just some normal, good old walking for two minutes, incline to zero, speed of about three. Then from there, I went into a sidewalk for two minutes or basically a minute on each side in each direction. Here, I'm only going 1.5 miles per hour. I feel like it looks faster than it is, but I promise once you're turned to the side, it like it just feels faster. So stick with around somewhere between 1.5 miles per hour. And this will really get your upper side, like upper outer portion of your glutes. That's where I was really feeling it. And if you want more quad, you can sit even lower. And then from there, I did a two minute incline walk. Here I'm again back to a speed of about three and I just have an incline of 10, so nothing crazy. But now we're really getting the gluteuses, making them nice and juicy. Those are definitely gonna be activated with this incline walk. Then from there, we did some more lateral work. So I did a two minute side shuffle, a minute on each side. This you're gonna feel on your calves as well. So you can also, if you need to, if it feels sketchy, you can hold on to the side handles or like the front handles with one hand, do whatever feels more comfortable for you. And then from there, I just finished off with a two minute jog. I did like a speed of seven, I believe, somewhere around there, incline of zero. Now, again, this is supposed to be steady state cardio. So I'm doing nothing where like my, your cardio, your, excuse me, your heart rate shouldn't be up like crazy high. You want to be, you know, not pushing yourself to a crazy degree. You just kind of want to stay in that elevated heart rate zone, but not feel like you're dying. So don't go crazy. And also, if you don't like that side shuffle, you can totally take that out and do three minutes of incline walk and then a three minute jog instead, if you would like. But then after that, I still had something left in me. So I just did a normal incline walk for a speed of 3.2 and an incline of 10 here for 10 minutes, like I said. So this totaled about a 40 minute workout, 45 minutes, because then I did like a three minute cool down walk after that. But this was really good. It was honestly fun and it made the time go by really fast. So again, you're gonna repeat those five intervals for a total of three times times, which will give you 30 minutes and then an extra 10 minutes for an incline walk. Hello, people. Happy Thursday. Today is officially leg day, new bro dose of the week. I have a few, well, really just one super insider, uh, scoop of insider info for you. I didn't realize how long my leg hair has gotten until I got out of the car today. And I am in fact wearing hot pink shorts in the gym right now. Um, but you know, whenever I'm like, ooh, my legs aren't shaving, like no one can tell. So like, if it's you, don't worry about it. But I just couldn't believe myself, especially when the sun hit them, I was like, 
oh my gosh, my legs are so far from being shaven. Like, how did I get here? Anyways, we really don't have time for chitter chatting, even though I'm chitter chattering, um, because we have, I, me, I have a doctor's appointment in a couple of hours, but it's like a half an hour away. So I really need to motor through this workout. So we're gonna try to keep this in like an hour, an hour and 15 minute leg day. So I had to turn to the one and only trusted Oxy Shred. I have the energy can here because this one does have caffeine and it's just quick and easy to grab. So I love taking this as a pre-workout, especially on leg days. This is in the Guava Paradise flavor. It tastes so good, but this, especially since this one has caffeine, it obviously gives me some energy, gets me really hyped up. But even aside from the caffeine in here, it just really helps with my focus in the gym. I'm way more into my workout when I'm taking OxyShred and it also helps with my performance. I just feel more amped, more powerful, stronger, all the things way more mentally in my workout when I take this. It also enhances my mood. So I love turning to OxyShred when I really need that extra boost in my workout. They have the carbonated ready to go cans like this one, or they have powder versions. They also have a non-stim formula where there's absolutely no caffeine at all if you're like an evening workout person. So there's really something for everyone and I absolutely love OxyShred. So don't forget you guys can use code LIFTFIT10 to save on any supplements from EHP Labs. Okay, so of course every like first exercise that I like to start with, especially when I'm in a time crunch, are all taken. So I was gonna do normal squats not gonna happen. So we're gonna do sumo squats on the Smith machine, which when I have to do squats on the Smith, Smith machine, that's what I like to opt for because I can really sit, sit back onto my heels and really focus more so on like concentration and getting a good contraction rather than trying to push a bunch of weight. I'm of course gonna do some warm up sets and this Smith machine is angled back and I would do this regardless, but especially since it's angled back, I'm gonna kick my feet forward more than I would. So if you were to look at me from the side, I'm kind of at an angle, I'm not standing straight up. So my feet are a little bit in front of me, very wide stance, about shoulder width apart, a little bit wider. My toes are just about pointed out at about like a 45 degree angle. That's our sumo squat stance. I have the bar right on my traps and I'm gonna be pushing my hips back and down like I'm sitting into a chair and breaking up my hips first and then the break at my knee is gonna follow. And the point of kicking my feet up really far is that now I have all my weight on my heels, which is what we want. Our shin is closer to being vertical. Our knee is closer to being stacked over our ankle. And so now we have a lot of weight in our glutes and a lot of the power and the drive is going to come from our glutes which is what I'm wanting with this movement here so we're going to go really slow and controlled and I'm going to try to like push the floor away with my heels by squeezing my glutes but that's kind of the cue that I picture in my head and I'm keeping that core nice and tight and we're kind of doing eccentric reps honestly we're going to go down slow for about a three count and then we're going to come up explode and really squeeze the glutes and we want to really make sure we're hitting depth as well so we want our quads to be about parallel with the ground at least Okay, next we're gonna move into some hamstring work and this is a single leg Smith machine deadlift. I love these because they just have a little bit more isolation on each leg. So kind of similar to what I just said, I kick my foot a little bit further out, again, just because this Smith machine is at a little bit of an angle and to account for when I come down, I'm more at a stable base. And with every RDL movement, you wanna start it by pushing your hips backwards instead of just bending over. So I'm gonna keep this bar really close along my leg the whole entire time. I like to have a really nice wide grip. And then I'm gonna be driving up through this front leg's heel and squeezing my glutes. So again, coming all the way down, squeezing up through my heel and squeezing my glutes. And I'm keeping the bar really, really close to my leg, kind of like, you wanna picture it like you're rolling a paintbrush, like a paint roller. And we're doing four sets of eight to 10. So we're still sticking with the Smith machine and we're gonna do some cast bridges, which is very similar to a normal hip thrust, but it's a shorter range of motion designed to isolate the glutes more because there's less knee flexion in there. So there's not as much recruitment for the quads. So it's kind of like sticking with the second, like half to last quarter of a rep of hip thrust, I guess, if you will. So normal hip thrust, you come down, right? And you're squeezing at the top and locking out. But instead of coming all the way down where my knees would drop in, the bottom of this range of motion is right before your knees would need to drift back 
towards you and your shin is not vertical anymore. So you kind of want to stay in that top range of motion. And of course, it's really important to really make sure that you're fully locked out at the top of the movement because that's the hardest part. So my knees are stacked over my ankles. The bottoms of my shoulder blades are still on the bench. I'm going to lift up, turn the Smith machine away from me to unclasp it. And we're just going to stay here for about 12 reps. Okay, now we're gonna move into some isolation work. We meet at the leg extension machine to hit a little bit more quads. So this is gonna be a little complex. We're gonna do for three sets. So I have about 50 pounds right here and I'm gonna do five reps on each leg. And with this leg extension, you really wanna make sure you're going as high up as you can and really squeezing at the top because that's the hardest part of the movement is when it's contracted in that shortened position. And then you're gonna do five reps directly right after that on the other leg. Four, five, and then I'm just under doubling my weight. And then you're gonna do 10 reps together just to make it a little more brutal. Four, remember, really making sure we're locking out. If you can't, then go down and wait. It's normal to not be able to lock out at the last few, but oh no, nine, ten, oh, oh my gosh, I hate that feeling. So you guys know I've been a little bit sick of the seated hip abduction machine, but since I'm short on time, I need something that's like two legs at once and that's bilateral. But again, if you don't want to do this, you could opt for like doing your side kicks with a plate on your hip or doing lateral lunges or glute meat kickbacks on the cable machine. Again, I just want a bilateral movement. But so essentially this is to hit the upper outer portion of our glute. I personally like, I feel it's the best when I'm kind of seated up forward and I have a little bit of a forward torso lean to help create a little bit of more of a glute stretch. And I have my feet on the outest point of the foot pad. Oh man, my glutes are already tired from this workout. But this is where you should be feeling it. So I like to put my hands here just to help with mind to muscle connection. And I picture my feet as like sweeping outward kind of in an arc away from the center of my body. And I'm really trying to focus on squeezing my glute medius and minimus as I'm doing this. All right, dogs, welcome to the last workout of the week. So today is my full body functional Friday where I do more of like a circuit style format workout. And so for here, I did eight different exercises for 40 seconds of working time followed by 20 seconds of rest. We're gonna complete this three times for a total of 24 minutes, nice and quick, just the way I like it. This app is also called Interval Timer. It's free on the app store. And so I started off for our first exercise of a half BOSU ball burpee with Jack. So I'm doing a half burpee. I'm not coming into a push up. And when I kick my legs out, I'm doing a jack where you essentially hop out, bring your feet apart, bring them back together, and then bring your feet up towards your chest and then lift that BOSU ball up towards the sky to complete that half burpee. The BOSU ball really yields more of a stability and balance component and gets more core engagement, which is why we're using it here and it's why I really like it. Then for a little more of a cardio-based movement to get that heart rate up, again, we're doing some speed skaters. I feel like I did these all the time, like, I don't know, six months ago, and then I kind of stopped doing them, but today they're resurrecting. So we're essentially, this is a great lateral movement for lateral explosivity, great for knee health too, honestly, just, and also glute health, just being able to explode, all that sort of stuff. So you're essentially gonna jump to the side laterally, kick that non-working leg behind you in a diagonal, and then you're essentially launching off that working leg laterally to explode back to the other side. Those are deadly and they make my quads burn like it's nobody's business. Then for more of a balance and stability exercise, we did a single leg RDL to a knee drive. So this really is recruiting balance for sure. So I keep my belly button really nice and tight to my side. I keep my spine, excuse me, I keep my neck in line with my spine. And a little trick here, I would say to really just play around with where you're placing the kettlebell because I feel like it really helps you with the stability factor. So I like to put it out right in front of me. And then I'm gonna tuck that belly button in really tight and then try to bring that knee up as high as I can, really just till parallel with the floor. 
but this is a great one also for like ankle stability too. But then from there, I did some dive bombers. This is a very upper body heavy exercise, especially for the 40 seconds, this was brutal. So you're essentially beginning like you're doing a pike push up, push up and then you kind of want to act like you're grazing the floor with your forehead. You want to get as close as you can without touching it. And then you want to press back up. It's kind of like a vinyasa flow, downward dog type thing. I love this just for also shoulder mobility as well. And then you really want to tighten your core to bring your hips back up to restart the movement. Then from there, I went into some glute work. So I did 15 weighted kettlebell glute bridges, um, really focusing on just doing really nice high quality reps. And then I went into some unrated, unweighted reps, excuse me, to finish off the timer. Biggest tip I have is to really tuck your pelvis. So if you had your hands on either side of your pelvis, you wanna tilt it backwards. That's also gonna help you engage your core and feel it more so in your glutes. And I have my ankle still stacked underneath my knee, as you can tell. And so then I basically just finished off with those unweighted reps until the 40 seconds were complete. Made me feel like I was doing Pilates, not gonna lie. And then I went to a back exercise. So these are gorilla rows, which I got from Elena. I forget, she's a big TikToker. I forget how to say her name, but these are great. I'm obsessed with these. So I essentially just did alternating gorilla, gorilla rows for the 40 seconds. You wanna keep your elbows tucked in towards your side. And remember that your hands are just hooks for the weight. You wanna be squeezing your lats to get that weight up. I have a really nice flat tabletop back and my neck is in line with my spine. My core is nice and tight. And I have a nice athletic stance. I have a bend in my legs just to allow me to also brace the weight. But the biggest thing here is you really wanna think about your lats squeezing to bring up that weight and keep those elbows nice and tight towards your side. Then for some ab work, I did my favorite high side plank crunches. I still just love these because they're so hard in the best way. Biggest thing, you wanna find a place where the side of your bottom foot can rest comfortably so you're not super wobbly. And you also want your wrist stacked underneath your shoulders. I find that's when I feel the most balanced. Again, you wanna keep that core really tight to your spine, tuck, it, tuck your belly button to your spine. And you don't ever want your working leg or arm to touch the ground in any which way. And you wanna try to keep your hips as raised as possible. So you don't wanna have your hips dip when you're bringing your knee to your elbow. You wanna stay in that really nice vertical line. So this is really gonna work both sides of our abs. And then last but not least, we're finishing off with some yoga ball good mornings. These are such a classic for me and I just love these. The biggest thing to help not have your hip flexors take over the movement or feel like the front of your hips is taking over the movement, really wanna focus on what I always say, to tuck that belly button to your spine, suck your belly button to your spine. That's what's really going to engage your deep core muscles and then inevitably cause have those be what's working rather than your hip flexors to pick up the ball and raise it. So you really wanna bring your belly button to your spine each time and you wanna to try to lift your shoulder blades off when you're bringing the ball up to meet your feet and then you wanna to try to not have the ball touch the mat as well. That's it for this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. I know I said last video that the next time you saw me was gonna be like a Costa Rica vlog, which technically I am in Costa Rica, but the videos after this one are going to be unleashed into Costa Rica love and Costa Rica life. I'm also planning on doing a week of workouts as well while I'm here, just to show you guys how my training has changed and how I'm basically my approach to still getting movement in while traveling, I guess, if you will, or living in a different environment. So if that's interesting to you, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the video. Again, don't forget that my Utah, my Utah retreat tickets are live. Sometimes I speak way too fast, faster than my brain is going. But my Utah retreat tickets are live down in the description box. All the workouts are written out down below as well if you wanna screenshot and take it to the gym. And if you wanna see more videos like this, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below on your thoughts of this structure if you kinda of liked the mix between mic'd up and voiced over or not. But thank you guys so, so much for watching and all of your love and support. I'm sending you so much love and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.